thank you everyone for coming to the session. Um, I'll be talking about developing in the cloud using AWS and EC2. Before I begin, I'll kind of talk about who I am. Uh, my name is Nika Hector. I'm, I'm Director of Web Development at DS Federal. Our projects mainly involve working with federal agencies to manage websites, code, content, data, and like IT infrastructure. Um, in addition to our clients working on the AWS platform, DS Federal's internal and external websites are on the AWS platform, which is a natural progression of me being a certified AWS solutions architect. You may have also seen me running around from here to there. So I am a co-organizer for Drupal for Gov. I'm also a board member and I run the weekly webinars that happen every third Thursday at 3 p.m. and I'm always looking for awesome topics and talent. So if you're interested, please reach out to email at drupalforgov at gmail.com. I had to give a shout out to uh, Drupal for Gov. So what I will be covering, I'll cover what exactly is AWS Cloud9. I'll talk about how you provision it, whether you're spinning up a new instance or using an existing compute. Uh, I'll briefly touch on like application setup within EC2, the capabilities of Cloud9, the cost associated with running it because everything is expensive, can be potentially expensive in AWS the advantages and disadvantages that I found, and answer any questions that you may have. So what is AWS? I mean, what is AWS Cloud? <coughs> it is basically an IDE, an integrated development environment, sim simple, similar to PHP Storm, uh, NetBeans, Microsoft Code, uh, it allows you to run, write, and debug your code, except you do it in a browser. Um, it supports over 40 programming languages, including PHP. So the image that you see to the right, I snatched off of AWS because it's an excellent explanation of how it works. You first, always, you have your source code repository, whether you use AWS's um, code commit or you use GitHub. Uh, to store your code. Uh, you have that code stored on an EC2 instance and you use connected to your Cloud9. Uh, you can also run uh, Cloud9 on an external server. It doesn't have to be an AWS compute instance. And then you access it using your browser and your computer. So why? Why am I using cloud? What brought me to cloud nine? Um, before the pandemic, I was in the office three to five times a week. And it allowed me to have that working relationship with the developers that I work with, um, where we could you know, sit next to each other and kind of pair program. Well, when the pandemic hit, we went completely 100% remote and it left a, a, a gap of where I could no longer like, pair program effectively with the developers that were on my team. So I decided to begin using Cloud9. Another thing, sometimes the laptops that you are provided or the, that the developers are working on, uh, you have si 16 megs of memory, they, they just don't cut it, right? Especially when you have developers working on multiple development environments. Um, they're spinning up all types of things from DDEV, Lando, uh, just developing different things. You run out of compute. Um, providing them with a ET EC2 instance with Cloud9 um, gives them that ability to, you know, I, I can easily provision and uh, instance and they can begin doing development work and share it with others on the team. And also as a director of web development, I'm not as close to the code. Um, so I don't necessarily need to have sometimes a project on my laptop, but having it in the cloud where I can access it and work with the team is 
valuable. So first, I'm gonna talk about the two ways that you can go about provisioning Cloud9. So there's first, the first way is provisioning it through Cloud9, which will spin up an EC2 instance for you, right? And then the second way is that you already have an existing instance, either an EC2 or an external server that you're using, and you want to use that. So let me back up. Yes. So let me go into provisioning a new EC2 instance. So this is the uh, screens that you'll see when you want to spin up a new EC2 instance. You select your instance type, whether it's T2 micro, small, large, um, and then you select your platform. As of now, Cloud9 only uh, is, works like automatically nicely with Amazon Linux 2. They've come out with Amazon Linux 2023 and it's a little trickier. The, P the Python version which you need is a little higher. Um, Cloud9 requires Py um, Python 2.7, but you can still get it running. You can install both. And then timeout. So when you're allowing Cloud9 to provision your um, compute, you can set your timeout, meaning if you step away from your Cloud9 IDE, it'll shut down your EC2 instance. You also set up your connection. So whether you use the AWS Systems Manager or you use SSH. I always use SSH because that's what I'm comfortable with. And then I always leave the default settings for the VPN because that is a whole other layer of complication that if you don't understand, you just leave it as a default. And you hit, so let me go back. So once you set all of this up, you hit the submit button and then it all, it provisions and spins up your Cloud9. The second way, which is what I've done in the example that I've um, for this presentation, is I'm using an existing compute. I wanted the latest and greatest. I wanted that Linux, um, Amazon Linux 2023 version, right? Um, they even have a new package manager. It's a D DNF. Um, so I wanted all of the new updates and capabilities that came with that. So what you need to do, so you have to do a little bit more. So what you'll have to do to allow your EC2 instance and your Cloud9 to um, communicate is that you'll have to add your public key to your EC2 instance so that Cloud9 can communicate with it. You also provide it with your username and your host, your IP address for your, your external server, whether it be your EC2 instance, or a, another external IP. And your port number is always 22. You provide your environment path, and that's basically the root of your, um, wherever your application, and it doesn't necessarily have to be Drupal, but it should be the root directory of where your code relies. So right here, I just had it in the VAR apps, but you could have it in VAR, www, HTML. Um, and then you have to, let it know where your Node.js, because Cloud9 needs Node.js to run. So you need to let it know where it is, and to get that, once you're on your server or your EC2 instance, you type which node, and you, it'll provide you with that path. If you're on a, so some projects, are more secure than others and you, you know sometimes you have to have a jump box that you, to gain access to the servers. If you have that, most setups don't have that so I, you can ignore this and then you provision that and then it'll install all of the things that you need for Cloud9. So this is what I currently have running on my EC2 instance. I have either, I have currently Apache, but you know, you could run Nginx, all of the things, my, my SQL, the PHP packages, Node.js, and Python for Linux 2023, you need Python version 2.7, although we have moved on to 3.0, and Xdebug, so it'll allow you to properly step through your code. So I'm gonna, 
see if I can actually do a demo. Bear with me because it's all it's awkward. Okay, so This is awkward. I'm gonna go here. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Cloud Nine. just show you I talked about like how it works but I'm gonna create an environment so I don't think I am because this is just difficult but I'm gonna talk you through this is the same thing that I kind of talked through you give it a name a description you select whether it's new existing I, I'm, I'm not gonna go through this what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back and show you the existing one that I set up for this discussion. And I'm gonna open. So you see all of the configuration, the name, the description, the members, meaning I've invited other another developer to kind of work with me with this code. Uh, my owner, ARN. Um, Username port, it gives you all of the information. So I'm gonna go and so I'm opening up my IDE within my browser. So I'm kind of gonna, I was hoping to run some things, but it's difficult. So I'm just gonna kind of talk you through some of the sweet spots within this IDE. So you have the ability to search your code. You can look for files, code. Here you can see your all of your code base and your files. Here it allows you the GitHub. It allows you to see the files that you've updated. It's just a good visual, helps you merge your code better. And then you can actually explore all of the other things that you can integrate with this Cloud9. You can access your S3 buckets, um, Lambda functions, and over here, It might. <laughs> okay. allows you to do a lot of your um, project settings. A lot of the configurations that you see here, you would see the same in your like PHP Storm or whatever IDE you use on your local development environment. So you have your run and debug configuration and your build. Like if you had, um, you were running something that needed to be built, you could do that there. Um, hint and warning configuration, code formatting. So this is basically all of the settings that you'll need to run your code. 
I, I can't see. I don't have my right glasses on. So I'm having a hard time seeing. Also, you can chat. So if you're working with someone remotely and you invite them to your environment and you chat with them. If you have multiple users like that, or is everyone kind of on the same branch? Or yes, everybody would be on the same branch. So if you were doing separate ones, you just have different instances that you have? Yes, yeah. yes. And if you are if you invite someone, is there are you changing the same actual <coughs> Code? Are you running into each other possibly, or is it you, you? You are. So it's your it's your own development environment, right? It's your own. So you just you want to share it with others right. so that you can collaborate and kind of okay. pair program. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, but the, the environment totally belongs to you. Cool. And then this is how you actually share. So you would give them your, and I'll provide more information because you just can't share. They have to either. They have to exist within the same organization that you're in, mm -hmm. and they have to have the appropriate roles. So you would add in their IIM username and then invite, and then they would pop up, and you could manage them and kick them out when you're ready. So, <laughs> and you can also set. So say I wanted to debug code, you could still do the same thing, right? Set breakpoints and then run and then it would debug your code. So that capability is there. So I'm gonna go back to my slides because I'm having difficulty with this. So cloud share, I just talked about how you have the ability to kind of share your code with others. So you need to do more than just invite them to your um, environment through that interface that I've provided. Um, they, have to be in the, they have to be in the same account, um, they either, or have to be an AWS account root user or an administrative user, or, and they have to have um, the roles, the correct roles assigned so that they can use Cloud9. Cost. So, so eight, Cloud9 is free, it's a service, and I believe it was open source. It, it is open source. Um, the costs are incurred with the compute. So your costs are incurred with your EC2 instances. Um, you can configure Cloud9 to spin down, similar to, as I mentioned earlier, when you set it up using Cloud9 and, and allow that to provision, it'll automatically configure it so that when you step away from your browser, it goes away. But if you set up your own instance, you have to configure it to do that shutdown and set up. So you would set up a Lambda, a Lambda function, maybe with a cloud watch alert that calls that Lambda function to provision it and shut it start it and shut it down. So that's the difference from allowing Cloud9 to provision it as, a, as for you doing it. So you know, like for example, I have a T2 Medium running, um, and that costs me, if I keep it running for a month, that costs me like $35 a month. But if I probably spin it up or down, if I shut it down at night or when I'm not using it, it would maybe $10 a month or 15 so it depends. Advantages. The advantages are accessibility. I can access my development environment anywhere as long as I have access to a laptop or a computer. I can also integrate it with other services such as S3 and other all of the other services that would work. Um, reduce development load on laptop, which has been one of the benefits that I've had with the teams that I work with and manage. Um, collaboration, especially working from home, is so easy, um, which is why I've started using it. And the built-in version control and resolving merge conflicts has been the ad most added benefit that I've had using Cloud9. Disadvantages. Internet dependency, You're, you have no access, you're screwed. Um, cost, 
you have to watch your costs, um, especially with AWS. And the learning curve, um, it, it takes a while to, you know, you have to have that uh, basic knowledge of EC2 instance and how to spin up and just understand how things work. And that is, are there any questions about that? So, um, you can handle things like running like a PHP application with a database. Um, if you're doing something like that, can you also run things like, um, uh, like something I do frequently is like you have like a live instance of something like Storybook, right? Like in my local, I actually um, run it at a DDEV and like proxy it and I can see it on that. But like, you know, like live watching the code while you're editing it and seeing the change. You yeah. Know, that in the browser. Yes, you can do that. Yep. I've had a, um, ha how many people actually use Cloud9? Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, I um, initially configured it with Docker because I actually use Docker on my local development environment, but I had trouble getting X, um, Xdebug to work. And so what you have to do is install Cloud9 within your Docker instance and spin all of that up. But I just didn't think that that was worth it. So I um, installed it just directly on the EC2 instance. Does it make more sense if you're also hosting at AWS, or would you like? That's the re so so that is the so that is the main reason why I am using Cloud Nine is because most of the work that I do is on AWS, and so it just makes it a lot easier for me to work with the team, my team, because that's what we use and a lot of my clients use. So it makes it easier from, for our developers. Uh, following up on the, the other question, um, do you use the RDS for the databases? I could, I just didn't. RDS is expensive, um, especially if you configure it. Um, you know, it can be very, yeah, it can be very expensive. So I didn't, I have everything on the, on the EC2 instance. And it's a development environment, so I don't really need to spin up a RDS instance. Follow-up question, uh, have you compared it to uh, Codespaces from GitHub? Oh, no, I haven't. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> you said Codespaces? Yeah, it uses VS Code. Uh, so Codespaces. You might also want to look at GitHub. Uh, yeah. Ah. So what are the benefits that those, for me asking questions, what are the benefits? <laughs> uh, well, I know Codespaces, you know, it, the story with the databases uh, is not as good. Uh, you know, they don't support you know, databases as easily as, as you would in the uh, EC2 compute instance. Um, but it uh, can be done. Okay. Uh, it's but GitPod is yeah, better. GitPod, GitPod, up to 50 hours a month is free. Oh. Mm. And so, for instance, for I'm, I'm a mentor at DrupalCon contribution days. And they've gone to that because you can spin it up in the cloud and not even have to install DDEV. But they literally have, they put DDEV inside the Git, Git pod. Oh. It just, when you spin it up, you, you're sitting there running DDEV, just like you were running on your local, except you don't have any of the frequently um, firewalled access problems that you have because it's an unabridged 18 gig RAM Linux machine. I'll have to check those. And it's an ID, like, like. Oh yeah, it runs VS Code. VS Code. It'll also, with one button, connect to a local I, um, VS Code instance mm -hmm. if you want to edit locally, wow. or you can switch it to either the IDE version or the local version of PHP Store. It doesn't mm -hmm. care. Wow. Okay. Any other questions? Does the IDE in Cloud9, does it offer things like code complete, coding style things? The, you mean for like Drupal? For Drupal or PHP? Or yes, it does. It does offer that. Intellivance. Yes. So that's really VS Code then? Or Codium? N no, I think, is it Cl Cloud9 is its own Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Cloud9 is its own it's getting ID. All the extensions. It's its own. So it, it when it downloads it, it installs it under a hidden .c9 directory where all of its code and files are found. 
and it gives you all of those features that you need. Are there uh, editor color schemes? Yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, it, actually, there is. You can set them in the settings. It's important. Yeah, it is. It is actually. Yeah. Um, any other questions? I'm wondering, are there like best practices in place? Like where you don't have to worry about security concerns. Like let's say you're working for like you know like a government agent, like a higher education or something, and they want to make sure that everything's locked down. Like on one of the projects I'm working on right now, it's like you know you can't you can only download a copy of the production database every so often, and it has to be recorded and all this stuff. Like like it would be it would be really cool to you know have folks doing all the development in the cloud, and it's like. Anyway, if they're worried about their their code existing on some infrastructure outside, yeah, they, they may not like yeah the cloud nine. I know the government is really stringent and tight on security, so they may not like developing in your. And to be to be honest, I really do like cloud nine, but I I really still appreciate having um, the Microsoft code and PHP Storm. Those are better because you have it's there on your laptop, so. The benefit of having Cloud9 is that I can pair program and work remotely and immediately like debug issues with your team. That's the benefit that it has given me. But like for deep down coding when you're building an application, I would, I would not do it in the cloud. Um, uh, you can, it has all of the capabilities, but for me I would just like to have my local development environment. Another tool in the toolkit instead of being a replacement for a Yes, it just tool. helps us um, pair program and kind of like solve the problems that we are working through. Um. We were using Aqueous Cloud IDE, and it was really nice because you could have your local machine doing development. And it came time to do a code review, just flip over to the IDE and run it all in the cloud. And Look at the code and do everything there, and then so you didn't have to spin down your your copy and spin up a, a, a sample copy. You just you just had two copies open at once. It didn't matter. That's super attractive. <clears throat> and um, thank you for allowing me to share the, the the tool that I've been using with my team. Um, if you're interested in talking with me, um, I'm on LinkedIn and my email address. Either the Jafar Gov or the DS Federal. <laughs> cool. Thank you.